Joining me now is Ambassador Philip Rieker. He is a career diplomat and chair of the Wilson Center's Global Europe program. He's also someone who has worked on negotiations with multiple countries as recently as last year. Ambassador, thanks for being here. Thank you, Brooke. At this point, do you think Ukraine will get what it's looking for? Well, I think we have to let it play out. These uh, NATO summits are, are complicated. Uh, there always tends to be an element of drama. There are many aspects to it. Of course, Ukraine is a major focus of that, but there's also NATO's own strategic way forward. Uh, Sweden, as your report mentioned, uh, has been given the green light. Turkey had been blocking that since they joined. Another example of how Vladimir Putin's uh, debacle, his war, uh, his unprovoked attack against uh, Ukraine has been a strategic failure for him. You mentioned letting it play out, but Ukraine has been asking to be part of NATO for a decade. Why haven't we? What's the issue? What's the fear here? Well, first and foremost, right now, of course, uh, Ukraine is under attack by Russia in a war. Uh, as the president has pointed out, for Ukraine to come and become a NATO member now, it would mean that all of the NATO allies would be technically uh, at war with Russia. We instead are supporting Ukraine uh, for as long as it takes, giving them what they need, uh, unprecedented levels of support and a real engagement with, of course, President Zelensky, who is a true profile and courage, along with all the people of his nation in fighting this. NATO is a complicated organization. It's more than just a military alliance. Uh, it requires, as we've seen in uh, various stages of NATO enlargement, um, that uh, the member states, the, the candidate countries, uh, can express their desire to join. The door is open, but they need to meet certain requirements. And I think that's what will continue to be discussed very closely. The communique that was referenced uh, will come out and we'll see exactly where we are. Uh, and I think we'll see some real progress and movement in what is, uh, as we've done all along, best to help Ukraine in this situation. Zelensky, though, frustrated with that progress, uh, tweeting that more action is needed. While President Biden said in a recent interview, though, that the U.S. is almost out of weapons to give Ukraine. Who's right here? Well, I don't think it's a question of, of right and wrong. Uh, Ukraine needs uh, armaments. We work incredibly hard to provide them with those along with so many other allies uh, who were able to contribute. Uh, there's a question of production, of supply chains, of uh, meeting those needs. And I know our military experts uh, who are the best at this, the best at logistics uh, from our European command uh, to every corner of the Pentagon, working with the other 30 NATO uh, allies, now Sweden on board, Sweden and Finland, both incredibly important countries for this, to help meet the needs of Ukraine in terms of timing, in terms of the, the precise uh, equipment and weapons that they need uh, to defend themselves against Russia's onslaught. All right, we will see what happens with those conversations later this week. Ambassador Philip Rieker, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.